that's no good, is it? Okay. That is much more like it. Still some minor striations. But very neat now. Good surface finish. Excellent. Okay, so that is fresh off the printer. And now that is dialed in. That really is very good. Turn it sideways. You can see some very slight banding. That is probably due to very slight changes in the filament. But straight on, it's almost flawless. Couple, couple of little bumps here. So it's very slightly, so it's very slightly over extruding, but only a little. That is the level of finish I can achieve on this old machine. That is one of the pelvis pieces. It's a spa. That really is, ah, that is unbelievably strong. I'll peel it and then weigh it. Oh, so changed all of the tolerances to try and get everything to fit nicely. It's a tiny bit tight in the cap, but I can live with that. Shaved off the top edges, so it neatens up the print and the fit. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, oh. oh it's so nice. Just slight interference on it pops. Stops any rattling, stops any squeaking. Oh, I could maybe go 20 microns bigger, 50. But for a printer, it's getting bang on. It makes everything easier. Assembling easier, taking apart easier, maintenance, everything. Good fit of your 3D prints. It's probably the most important manufacturing concern. You know, once it can actually be made and all the rest of it. So, pelvis, spa, hip pitch assembled. That's the sliding, uh, the bearing slide, bearing mount slide. That's where the bearing slides up and down. And the weight, I shall check. Where are my scales? Okay. According to the slicer, that should be 159 grams. It's made it worse. Let's see what we get. Okay. Little heavier. Interesting. I was actually expecting that to go the other way. Definitely grams, definitely zero. 183, huh. So it's up 24 grams over 159. Well, that's good. It means I can uh, update the CAD model based on what the slicer says with an accurate adjustment. I'll check a couple more, of course, to be sure. But there we have it, 183 grams, 20% infill, five surface layers, um, printed on an up box with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, hardened steel, 20% chopped carbon strand, nylon. And in a real thing, that's what that infill looks like. That's 20%. And this one is printed 
so that no supports get formed in these areas. I notice that there's a gap here, so that's maybe something to be looked at. But that's 20% infill. 1.75 millimeter filament. What else? Printing that hot at 300 degrees and dried at 70 degrees centigrade for at least 24 hours, even if it's fresh out of the box. If you get any moisture at all in these things, they're an absolute disaster. So here's a side by side, showing the difference between properly dried filament and still slightly damp filament. You can see the surface finish is just nowhere near. That's flawless. And that could be just a few percent of moisture. See this ring was printed with slightly wet filament. You can see the expansion and where the tip has dragged across the surface. Top of the pelvis is the crest, uh, which I guess for anatomy would be the iliac crest. So that's the spar, which goes down to the hip pitch. And this provides, the crest provides the support for the hip pitch motor. I don't have any assembled at the moment. And then the main pitch waist bearing is this big one here. Um, let's see if that fits. Oh, yes. In fact, first of all, there will be this ring. So this is the ring which will transmit torque to the pelvis from within the torso. That, by the feel of it, is going to be tight. Whether it goes on. <laughs> right, next will be this bearing. Oh, that's good. And when there are two crests, they will interlink. And that should lock everything nicely together, print another one of those overnight. And then everything's locked in place by the spar. And there are then four bolts, which will hold it all together. So again, I don't know if this will fit. That's the best way to press this together. I guess you could use the screws themselves, but I want to see if this will just go and uh, something to push it against. I'm going to do it with my hands. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! That's so nice. Okay, great. That will clump up tight. Oh! Lots of guessing went into that. Fantastic. So that is properly locked together. When you've got two of those back together, back to back, screwed tight with those four screws, that will be solid as anything. That is the waist rotation. You can see there is a clearance down in there. It's going to be quite awkward fitting there, actually. That's something to bear in mind. Might not be able to do that in two parts, in fact. All right. Need be, I can always, yeah. I'm going to push this across a little bit, otherwise it's going to be a real pain to assemble that. But there we are. Carbon fibre reinforced nylon. That is Formula One. <laughs> that is Formula One of um, homebrew robotics. PLA Plus. For the rings, it's strong enough, it's certainly cheaper, it's probably easier to print, um, it's a different colour which I kind of like, 
and I think, I think it's probably slightly better for the belt. The carbon, I suspect, will end up being a touch abrasive if it's used. Don't have the time to test that now, but it's something which could be checked. Um, but enough reasons regardless to just do those in PLA. All right, we can just keep on pushing down the leg now. Lovely.